Being excellent at what you do is not an act. It's a habit. And that is the thought for today. Welcome to 7 Good Minutes. I'm Clyde Lee Dennis. Thanks for joining me for what I believe will be seven of the most enriching minutes of your day. In today's audio, our friends at Absolute Motivation help us understand the importance of developing good habits. Enjoy. The cost of your good habits is in the present, and the cost of your bad habits is in the future. Your outcomes in life are often a lagging measure of your habits. Your bank account is a lagging measure of your financial habits. Your weight is a lagging measure of your eating habits. Your knowledge is a lagging measure of your learning and reading habits. We think the thing that needs to change is the bank account or the test score or the number on the scale, but actually the thing that needs to change are the habits that precede those outcomes. That your habits reinforce a particular identity. Every action you take is kind of like a vote for the type of person you want to become. And if you can master the right actions, if you can master the right habits, then you can start to cast votes for this new identity, this desired person that you want to be. I think that's one of the reasons why small habits matter so much. They don't necessarily transform your life overnight. Doing one push-up does not transform your body, but it does cast a vote for being the type of person who doesn't miss workouts. The real goal is not to run a marathon. The goal is to become a runner. The goal is not to write a book. The goal is to become a writer. Because once you've adopted that identity, you're really not even pursuing behavior change anymore. You're just kind of acting in alignment with the type of person you already see yourself to be. If we're going to be building habits anyway, then it makes more sense to be able to understand how they work and how to structure them so that uh, you can be the architect of your habits rather than the victim of them. A goal is focused on the outcome. Uh, a system is focused on the process. If you are a writer, your goal might be to rest, write a best-selling book, but your system is the writing process that you follow each day and like getting your butt in the chair. It's your research. What if you ignored the goal, right? If you say forget about the goal and focused only on the system, would you still get results? We live in a very outcome-focused society. Uh, things are only news stories or shared on social media once they are a result. So uh, the results of success are very visible and easy to view. Like, what is the difference between eating a burger and fries for lunch or eating a salad? Not a whole lot on any given day. Your body looks basically the same in the mirror. The scale hasn't really changed. It's really easy to dismiss it in your mind and say, oh, this is kind of insignificant. But, you know, you turn around two or five or ten years later and you realize, oh, wow, those daily choices really did add up. It's just much harder to see on a granular basis. Achieving a goal only changes your life for the moment. It's actually not the thing that you're looking for. We think the results are the thing that needs to change, but it's actually the process behind the results. You don't need to lose weight. You need better eating habits, and then your weight will always be around where you want it to be. You don't need more money, you just need better financial habits, and then you'll always have enough money to manage the thing that comes up. Because if it's all about the goal, as soon as the goal is achieved, you don't have that motivating you anymore. But if instead it's about being a runner, then even, when, even once you finish the race, you still have a reason to show up again the next week. In, in pretty much any domain, true long-term thinking is really goalless thinking. It's much more about being that person, developing that identity, following that system, uh, and then you just happen to realize your potential along the way. And habits are a lot like that. They're, they're not exactly like compound interest, you know, where you kind of like hit that hockey stick portion of the curve, but they really feel like that a lot. It feels insignificant on any day, but then you turn around 10 years later and it's actually, you're surprised by where you end up. And that's a hallmark of any compounding process, that the greatest returns are delayed. Habits are like that too. You know, they, they don't feel like much on any given day, but they really add up over the months and years. You go to college now, and then you graduate in four years. You save for retirement today, and then you retire decades from now. You show up at work this week, and then you get a paycheck in a month. And so it's actually like, there are all kinds of things we do 
in modern society that require you to delay gratification. So there's an immediate outcome, an immediate reward, and then an ultimate reward. And for your bad habits, one reason bad habits stick so readily that they, they form so easily is because bad habits, often the immediate reward is favorable. Meanwhile, good habits are often the exact opposite. The immediate reward of going to the gym or going to the gym for like a week isn't really that great. Your body's probably sore. Uh, you don't have much to show for it. Your body looks the same. Your weight hasn't really changed. But it's, if you stick to that for six months or a year or two years, then the ultimate reward is favorable. Uh, or a lot of the challenge of building good habits and breaking bad ones is figuring out how to pull the long-term costs of your bad habits into the present moment so you feel a little bit of that pain right now and have a reason to avoid it and pull the long-term rewards of your good habits into the present moment so it feels good and you have a reason to kind of make it through that like valley of death in the beginning and stick with it while you're waiting for those delayed rewards to accumulate. The ultimate form of intrinsic gratification is a reaffirmation of your desired identity. If uh, you, if your desired identity is, I'm the type of person who doesn't miss workouts, or I'm an athlete, every time you're doing a squat, literally you can be in the middle of the rep, and you're already getting gratified because you're acting in alignment with the type of person you wanna be. It takes a little while to get to that point where that actually feels like you, when you walk into the gym for the first time, you feel very uncertain. It's not your territory. You don't feel like it's your terrain. But once you show up again for a week or a month or a year, at some point you cross this invisible threshold where it starts to feel like, yeah, this is for me. Once you've crossed that stage, it becomes more likely that you can get that kind of reaffirmation of your identity and start to instantly feel gratified. We should let the behavior lead the way. So let the behavior drive the belief rather than the belief drive the behavior. But if you're trying to get yourself to latch onto a new identity or tell yourself a new story, it's more powerful to let the behavior lead the way because the behavior provides immediate evidence that you are that kind of person. I think there's something powerful about good habits become easy habits when you can learn to find joy in delaying gratification. That does it for today's episode of 7 Good Minutes. Please take a moment to rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts. If you have questions, you can ask those by going to 7goodminutes.com slash askclyde or get me on Twitter at Clyde Lee Dennis. Until next time, let's be civil to one another out there. Thanks for listening.